Welcome to the third and final part of my review and analysis of the Rings of Power. We've made it. Gandalf, let's rock. I go by my own personal rule of thumb, that a television show or movie can survive mediocrity when it comes to acting and general lack of talent in other areas as long as the script itself is good. It's when the script falters that everything else is exposed and makes everything worse. Like a nervous introvert getting invited out for drinks and their friends invited their weird friends. I'm about four, four locos in. <laughs> this is the problem with Rings of Power and the terrible no good excuse for a script they cobbled together. I'm a writer myself and that's actually how I ended up starting this YouTube channel. I do have a graphic novel published through Calibre Comics, the publication responsible for cult classics such as The Crow and Dead World, and have honestly generally been experiencing imposter syndrome ever since signing the deal a couple of years ago. Even though I love the concept of my original story and I'm proud of what I accomplished, there are a lot of amateur mistakes that I made when writing the first book in my series that I realized after the fact and absolutely never want to make again. Audiences in general are very intelligent. Audiences typically know when something is poorly done, poorly written, badly produced. The only thing is they might not be able to articulate or pinpoint exactly what that is or why. Something just doesn't feel right. That's why I wanted to make this channel to start exploring what those things are that we all feel is wrong with something but can't quite put our finger on. And that brings us back to the Rings of Power. This show takes so many wrong turns in script writing it's pretty unbelievable. It's crazy that a billion dollar show with supposedly seasoned and professional writers makes countless writing mistakes that I myself would beat my own ass for if I did them again. If you're just joining me, I'd suggest viewing these two videos first. These two review episodes one through three and analyze the writing problems and meta issues associated with this train wreck of a TV show. This final video that you're watching will be going over episodes four through eight, providing additional commentary and general musings that supplement the overall analysis of the script, acting, and editing issues I laid out in the last video. Now, with that said, let's get to reviewing, shall we? Rings of Power, episode four. Episode four covers a whole lot of things while covering extremely little ground all at once. Bootleg Legolas gets freed by the Orc Daddy to give a warning to the village that they're coming for them, because it's always a good idea to give your enemies prep time. Mithril's discovered, and apparently has magical capabilities, because the showrunners decided that was a smart idea. Galadriel bullies her way into getting the Woman King to give her her army to satiate her vengeance narrative. And Isildur... fucking... whatever. Who cares? His story is so boring and insignificant, it doesn't matter. Oh, and the episode has race relation allegories by having the Numenorians pissed that the elves took their jobs. I'm not even fucking kidding. One as boundless as a sunrise over the rolling sea. Ah uh, yeah, my favorite ham-fisted dialogue trying to emulate something superior. Tolkien's work. Fucking cringe. Elf workers taking your trades. They took our job. I took our job. They took your job. The queen's either blind or an elf lover. They took our jobs! Just some fucking race-baiting rebel rouser over here. As Drinker said, it needs to reflect the world we live in today, I guess. I can't believe this isn't a fantasy show. I believe the man you hold in your dungeons is no common ruler, but the lost heir in exile to the throne of the Southland. Stunning and brave woman tries to explain who not Sauron is to Woman King. You do not understand Galadriel, daughter of Finarfin. And you should stand aside. Oh shit, can't fight. Meow. Or are you a castaway, grasping for a handhold in a tempest? There is a tempest in me! Christ, man, the acting is so awful. Couple that with the dialogue. Ugh. Like I said, Morphid Clark is basically Tessa Thompson 2.0. These winds are turning my mind to mush. He was off to Mine Court's chasm today. You know, Disa, there is no secret worth concealing with deception. Disa, played by Sofia Nonvetti, is legitimately the best character in this show. Considering how good Dr. Oz and Discount Gimli's chemistry is, I wish she got more screen time along with them. This is also where the fan baiting by Amazon becomes obvious, because I think it's near universally agreed that she's the best actor and character here after all. Amazon can't seem to shut the fuck up about diversity, because it's what they were droning on and on about since day one of the announcement of Rings of Power. Todd Bowles, Tampa Bay Buccaneers head coach in the National Football League, 
said it best recently when he was asked about how his skin color relates to active hiring of black NFL coaches. You and Mike Tomlin are two of the few black head coaches in the league. I wonder what your relationship is like with them and your thoughts on Steve Wilkes joining that fold. I have a very good relationship with Tomlin. Uh, we don't look at what color we are when we coach against each other. We just know each other. I have a lot of very good white friends that coach in this league as well, and I don't think it's a big deal as far as us being coaching against each other. I think it's normal. Wilkes got an opportunity to do a good job. Hopefully he does it. And we coach ball. We don't look at color. But you also understand that representation matters too, right? And that when young aspiring coaches or even football players, they see you guys, you know, they see someone that looks like them, maybe grew up like them, that has to mean something. Well, when you say you see you guys and look like them and grow up like them, it means that we're eyeballs to begin with. And I think the minute you guys start stop making a big deal about it, everybody else will as well. Hiring a diverse cast isn't new, it isn't stunning, it isn't brave, although I don't want you to stop suggesting it, otherwise I'd have to stop mocking you for saying it, and for that, I would be sad. There's a reason no one complained about Jim Gordon being played by Jeffrey Wright or Catwoman being played by Zoe Kravitz in the Batman movie this year. They were clearly outstanding in their roles and Warner Brothers smartly decided not to draw any attention to it. Maybe because they knew they had a banger of a project on their hands and didn't need to stir the fan bait pot in order to drum up conversation. They are both great actors, and the finished product showed that they were clearly top-notch choices. When fan baiting dies down, studios, please, take a note from this, shut the fuck up about it, and do your job. Just do your job! Alright, don't try to make too much out of it! Just do your job! Mine below the mirror. Even camera angles and certain shots in this show look wonky as fuck. Lighter than silk, it would best have proudest blades. Be thrill. I'm not sure if this was in the appendices, but it seems like it's reaching to make the origin of Mithril, or Mithril itself, something of significance in the show's storyline. Much like Captain Marvel did with Nick Fury, did I need to see how he lost his eye? Did I need to know the Joker's origin? Did I need to know Hannibal Lecter's? And it's not even interesting. It's partially Membaberry, partially we need a reason to do the thing. Let's include something people know. And its origin isn't even clever, it's discovered through mining. Wow. Neat. So basically, exactly like I would have figured. In this scene though, we really start to see Durin and Elrond's friendship as a highlight of this shitty show. Or at least allowing it to have some sort of respectable character and actor integration. There's some reasonably well done acting that's propping up an unbearably bland script and the actors have genuine chemistry. It seems to me that you do well to identify what it is that your opponent most fears. Give them a means of mustering it so that you can muster them. This dude's totally not Sauron. He's not conniving or sounding manipulative or anything. Apparently the actor didn't know he was Sauron until multiple episodes into filming. And like, just how? This is where the show really started to wear me down because it's a perfect culmination of everything wrong with it. First, I'll get this out of the way. The catching of the arrow is really cool. Slick idea. But they of course have to do it in slow-mo. Hi Zack Snyder. If you know my opinion on Zack Snyder, you know I am not particularly fond of that. What is Zack Snyder known for? People would think I was known for slow motion. I like slow motion. I don't really like slow motion that much. I don't really like slow motion that much. I don't really like slow motion that much. The application of slow motion in this instance is supposed to imply drama. It's supposed to create a sense of tension for the audience. Unfortunately, we're not invested in the characters whatsoever, nor do we actually feel scared for their safety anyway. Implied drama where there is none. Demanded tension when there's nothing to be found. All because the script hasn't given us a single reason to give a flying fuck about these characters. The music here is genuinely misplaced too. The implied and desired mood of the scene doesn't fit or seem like the right choice considering what's actually happening. The musical score has been a huge problem that I mentioned in my previous video, but it really ramps it up throughout the remaining episodes. 
It's like the music's trying to make up for a lack of weight in the script, and in doing so becomes overbearing and actually brought me out of the show even more than I already was because of how misplaced it felt. I can almost feel the showrunners screaming at the composer about being more and more epic. Give him time. Even the hottest coals eventually cool. Hey, well, sometimes I wish they wouldn't. More brilliant lines from Lord of the Cringe. Lands of Power, episode 5. Okay, so in this episode, the stranger protects the discount Frodo and friends from some wolves. The elves need Mithril's showrunners made up healing powers to stop them from dying. Galadriel bullies people into submission till they decide to send an army with her to fight orcs in the Southlands. And Little House on the Patriarchy and Discount Legolas prep to fight said orcs. Boom. Exciting shit. I cannot get over the fact that they put grass and shit in the Harfoot's hair. Hey, how do we show that not hobbits are of the earth? Why don't we, like, put earth in their fucking hair? Genius. Not all who wander or wander are lost. Oi. All that is gold does not glitter. Not all those who wander are lost. Shut up! Shut the fuck up! Oh. Dumbledore pulls an average American on the 4th of July and almost blows his hand off. Galadriel is going to teach these badasses how to fight. Look, the strong whammon arc gets a little old. If this was the MCU, when it was good, and say Black Widow was doing this, yeah, we'd absolutely accept it, because we liked her. We'd understand she'd be able to outmaneuver multiple people at once, but this doesn't feel earned, especially because as an audience member, I don't like this character. And at the very least, this looks absolutely fucking ridiculous and is choreographed and shot so poorly that it's laughable. Still can't stop thinking about all the folks who were shocked this dude Sauron, both in the show and in the audience. Loyalty to a friend ought to be expected, regardless of his race. <sighs> Jesus. Did the dwarves find the ore or not? I swore an oath to Durin. I don't know, big guy. Pretty sure you can take that as a yes. A horse master recruited him. Sorry, Isil. I see he's always right. Shut the fuck up! What do you know of darkness? You have not seen what I have seen. We're all about to be buried in this tower, so why be buried with us? I've come to know the voices and the hands of those behind them. Half of us just left. But half stayed, including you. Discount Legolas feels like a different character than he did in the previous four episodes. It's weird. In the first, he was kind of a rugged dickhead, even around the kid who he's being nice to right now. It just feels like the writers are having him do whatever they need him to do and be whatever the plot needs him to be. Someone described it as the actors not understanding what kind of show they're supposed to be in, and this is a perfect example of that. It is a key, giving the orcs a home in these lands. A key to create Mordor. This is, by far, the stupidest MacGuffin I've seen in modern entertainment. From where did you procure the table? I'll have to send it home with you so it can be treated with the proper respect. <laughs> you made it up, didn't you? This has been wanting a new table for years, so... <laughs> This is a cute character moment between the two that I genuinely appreciated, until... Give me the meat, and give it to me raw. What the fuck? Uh, how exactly are 500 men fitting on these boats? What the fuck? Someone on Twitter did a drawing of how the writers thought boats must work, and I love this. Rings of Power, episode 6. This one is the big ol' fight scene. That's it. Big ol' beat em up and Mordor gets created through process of idiocy. Our enemy vows to attack. Who among you will stand? The copy and paste people here is fucking embarrassing. Holy shit. Just wait until every last orc has crossed that bridge to spring our attack. To your positions. Little House on the Patriarchy and Discount Legolas are leading them. I understand Discount Legolas, but why her? What the fuck has she done whatsoever to be the one leading them? And how is she now some sort of tactician? Simple answer, it's the writer's choice. 
It doesn't make natural sense, but it's what the writers wanted to happen. But it's fiction. What happens in the story is obviously what the writers want to happen. Well, you're not wrong. Characters do what the writers want. Yep, but that sort of argument would mean that there is no objective barometer for quality in writing. If that argument held any weight, then all writing would be of equal value, and it's simply not. Characters either make sense with the established world built around them, or they do not. This character, doing these things, does not make sense other than, well, we want her to. I also find it difficult to connect with this rousing speech because, once again... I've connected with none of these characters. I know I've repeated this, but watching this show is more like being a passenger. Like watching something as a sequence of events from far away. Like watching a history documentary minus the narration. Visually being told these things happened, and then this thing happened, and then this thing happened. It is a strange fate that we should suffer so much fear and doubt over so small a thing. Why sacrifice their lives? For such a little thing. Oi! Commander of the Northern Armies. Galapia. Anyone else tired of how they say her name? And no, it's not Galadriel. That's strong women. Thank you very much. You remember me? I killed Sauron. And even after this, people were still shocked at the reveal of Halbrand being Sauron. I smell bullshit. Mountain go boom. Do volcanoes work like this? I don't know because who cares, right? It's a fantasy show. Except I can't suspend my disbelief because of how fucking contrived and stupid it is that Mount Doom, in vicariously Mordor, is created thanks to a fucking Rube Goldberg device. Rings of Power, episode 7. In this episode, Elrond gets denied of the Mithril because Durin's dad is a dickhead and the Southlands is obviously Mordor. What a fucking banger. Stay with me. Every person here is going to die of smoke inhalation or suffer long-term effects. Is Galadriel going to help anyone that actually needs it? The kid is fine besides the long-term effects he would suffer, that I'm sure he somehow won't because of reasons. But there's a fucking dude on fire that's in torturous pain not 10 feet from her. What the fuck? People are shouting everywhere, why is she so casually walking away? Would it be because the writers want strong women and the who cares about this kid to have screen time together? I honestly don't even remember who this guy is, and I don't care. This is like the scene in episode 2 when the epic music played while the guy I didn't know got arrows to the chest, and my thought was, who gives a shit? I'll ask him then. The Harfoots tell their own kind to get fucked if they fall behind or get injured, then ask them to have their friend help. And the Dwarf King says he won't risk sacrificing any possible dwarven lives to save an entire race. Fuck man, people of Middle Earth are dog shit bastards in this show, huh? Why not make a show about these people? It has real potential and wouldn't upset fans of the lore either. The acting's great here, I don't mind admitting this made me actually feel something. Wait, why is Strong Woman and Who Gives a Fuck About This Kid away from the village? They say they need to regroup with the living. Newsflash, you fucking left them. So yes, this was written just to give these two characters time together. Better be a good reason why. Because wouldn't she or any of our leads stay behind to help those who are injured? They're the leaders, right? And how are they alive? Because every person there should be Darren Sheehan. I get that this is a fantasy show, but suspension of disbelief means following the rules that the show itself has established. There hasn't been anything to indicate our main heroes are somehow invulnerable. Anyone ever see Dante's Peak? You're fucking dead, man. Elrond is as much a brother to me as if he'd been fired in my own mother's womb. These cringe lines, man. And they're not done. Want some more? You harm my hair in her foot, and I'd bring the lot of you. Feminem makes Harfoot home go boom. Looks like Woman King has gone full can she on us. We stay true to each other. We face it. With our hearts even bigger in our feet. 
as he's looking right at the camera in the most embarrassing line of the entire show. I honestly thought this one was just for the trailers, but it's not. And how do they suggest they pick each other up? What's been established so far is that they just leave each other behind on account of injury. So far for them, it's been shown that if it comes down to, hey, I need help, you get a big ol' fucking nope. Here's a fine example of what I said earlier, that the script ignores established character traits when a rousing speech is in order. As long as it sounds good, I guess. Except it doesn't. And, of course, why wouldn't there be a Belrog? Gotta get them member berries flowing, because this is the only time you see him. Wait, are you fucking kidding me with the overlay text? If you were wondering who this show is actually for, this cinches it. The attack on fans made it clear they don't give a fuck about them, but the fact that they don't trust the audience enough to figure out on their own that this is Mordor lets you know, this shit is exclusively for non-fans. Rings of Power, Episode 8. The final episode. We made it, Gandalf. Let's dance again. <laughs> In this episode, Not Sauron reveals that he is Sauron and turns into an incel because strong women don't want no scrubs. And even though she's a fucking idiot who somehow didn't recognize that the dude she was parading around with was the Dark Lord himself, she doesn't tell a single soul and gets a ring of power because this is 2022 and gals can't do no wrong in media. Haru Sauron. Genuinely curious that this actually fooled anyone into thinking he was Sauron. Galadriel? <laughs> no, I told you. It's strong women. I should have trusted you. It is a mistake I will not make again. Why is this woman constantly failing upward? In the amounts we need, it would too greatly dilute its unique qualities. And couldn't the right alloy also amplify those qualities? Isn't Kella Brimbor the dude who's like the Tom Brady of crafting? Why would the most simplistic suggestion baffle him, like he had never thought of it before? Is this supposed to make Sauron appear smart, manipulative? So to do that, this is the best they could come up with? Because all it does is make both characters look like simpletons. It's like running out of shampoo and someone suggests putting a little water in the bottle and shaking it up, and your mind is just fucking blown. It would be smaller than previously imagined, something that could be carried, a scepter perhaps, or perhaps a crown. The tree's dying and that's what's killing him, right? And then it was laying next to the dead leaf and it brought it back to life, right? So why not just like, stab the fucking tree with it or something? Lay it next to the tree, melt it down and pour that shit on the tree. Anything. But nah, we need to come up with a reason to make the rings, so... <laughs> Oh no, the unlikable not-Hobbit leader gets a knife to the gut. I give a shit. I'm good. Nah, bro. When it comes to a season two, I think we're all good. Oh look, the androgynous things are Nas girls. So glad this entire side plot went absolutely fucking nowhere. Gotta keep a few of those mystery boxes going for season two, huh? Hold still. We'll find a way to carry you back. Oh really? You're gonna find a way to carry him back? I suggest you follow the advice he gave to the dude whose foot was broken. You're holding us up, buddy. Fucking see you later. This is... I don't even know. Is this bad acting? I mean, yeah, but whose fault is it? This is a director's fault. This is a writer's fault. This is everyone's fault that this is so fucking ridiculous. Supposing we've been using too much force. Dismantle this. We start again. What the fuck does this even mean? It's the most generic, idiotic advice given to a master craftsman, but the characters think it's genius. A big aha moment. You tell me who you are. You know who I am. Who you really are. I mentioned this before, but now we're here. Why wouldn't Chad just lie to her to keep his secret hidden? It'd be pretty easy to. There was an illegitimate child. Just anything. Yet another character just not doing the logical thing. Just deciding to be smug because we have to make this season feel like something happened. And even though it was extremely obvious, the Sauron reveal is that thing. You have been very brave. Yes, very stunning. And very brave. You would make me a tyrant. I would make you a queen. So Sauron is big simpin' for Gladriel. Big yikes. You will die because of me! Yeah! Sauron gets friend zone, so that's why he ultimately snaps. Sauron's an incel. To make this even more absurd, these camera angles are fucking horrendous and it makes it look goofy as shit. Where is Halbrand? Doubt he will return. And should he ever, none of us are to treat with him again. So you're just gonna let that mystery go, huh? Oh, this dude who helped create these tremendously powerful rings with his suggestions? 
We should never talk to him again if we see him now that he's disappeared. Eh, sure, why not? Why the fuck not? Perhaps it would be best if you lead off. Always follow your nose. If you die to the Anok, always follow your nose. Mystery box uncovered. He's Gandalf, meaning he's exactly who you thought he was. Expectation subverted because I gave the writers the benefit of the doubt that it wouldn't be Gandalf. Because that's too obvious, so never mind. Whoa, it's just like Sauron's eye, remember? So Elrond knows that Galadriel's responsible for Sauron's return, but yeah, she totally deserves that ring. And finally, this fucking show's over. Gandalf, hit it. Amazon is already underway filming a season two, and for the life of me, I don't know why anyone would expect this thing to improve. Nothing's changed besides the location where it's being filmed. It's still being led by the showrunners who had J.J. Abrams bribe Amazon into letting them do it, and now the company has to lie in the bed they've made. But hey, I guess when your bed looks like this, it doesn't really matter, does it? Mexico. Till next time. All GG's. I'm saying.